Welcome to Smart Catalyst, December 29, 2018. So today we are going to see all these articles. The first one is Government Acts to Check Onion Price Fall. The second one is Cabinet Approves Setting Up of National Commission for Homeopathy. And the third one is Second Biennial Update Report to UNFCCC. And the fourth one is Sexual Assault on Boys is Also Punishable by Death. And the fifth one is India to Go Ahead with Manned Space Mission by 2022. And the sixth article is Center to Give Nods to the Draft Bill on Indian Medicine. And the seventh one is Cabinet Approves Easing of the Norms for Development in CRZ. And the eighth one is India to contribute 4,500 crore for Bhutan's five-year plan. And the last one is Health of Banks Set to Improve. So the first article is Government Acts to Check the Onion Price Fall. So what the news here is, as the onion arrivals have increased in the market recently, due to which the price of the onions have subdued it to a lot or reduced it to a lot, in a measure to help the farmers, the government introduced an incentive for the export of onions under the MEIS scheme, which is the Merchandise Exports for India scheme. So under that, what they did is they increased the incentive from 5% to 10%. Okay? So if you are going to export the onions, then you are now getting 10% incentive from the government. So why they are doing this means in order to encourage the exports of onions because there is overproduction so that the domestic price gets stabilized. Thereby we can stabilize the slumping price of the onion also. Okay? So apart from that, the government has also changed the minimum support price of 23 minor forest produce and also introduced some 17 items newly into the MSP regime. So the revised items under MSP are those which include the forest produce which covered under the scheme which was introduced in 2013 to 14 itself. Okay. So now we are going to see what this merchandise export from India scheme means. So the government of India has introduced this MEIS scheme and service export incentive scheme through the foreign trade policy. So two things, one is merchandise which is related to goods and second one is service. Okay. So why government has introduced these two things means in order to promote the export of notified goods as well as services which is produced or originated in India. So MEIS is a major export promotion scheme. So what are the provisions of this export promotion scheme means the notified goods which are exported, those notified goods are given a MEIS duty free scripts. So these are like receipt kind of a thing which can be used while paying a number of duties like customs duties, exercise duties. So the second article is cabinet approves the setting up of national commission for homeopathy bill 2018. So what the news here is the government is now trying to replace the existing regulator of homeopathy which is the central council for homeopathy with this national commission of homeopathy. So why they are doing this means in order to monitor the homeopathy education in the country as a whole and also to track the homeopathy practitioners all throughout the country. So Nitya Ayog similarly working on two bills, one is this homeopathy bill, second one is the medical commission bill. So it actually aimed to replace the medical council of India with national medical commission. Okay. So if you see this national commission for homeopathy, it is actually having three autonomous body. One is board of assessment and rating, second one is board of ethics and registration and third one is homeopathy education board. So if you see the functioning of each and everything, the board of assessment and rating is to assess and grant permission to their educational institutions and second one is to maintain national register and ethical issues relating to the practitioners who are practicing the homeopathy and third one is conducting overall education of homeopathy by this board so the main aim of this bill is to bring the reforms in the medical education of homeopathy in line with the national medical commission which was already proposed by nitya ayog so apart from all these things there are two major things which is also proposed in the same bill one is a common entrance exam and then licentiate exam for the students who are practicing or who are ongoing through the education process of homeopathy and second one is for teachers the teachers eligibility test has also been proposed to assess the standard of the teachers before appointment and promotion into the educational institutions relating to homeopathy so the next article is second biennial update report to UNFCCC so we all knew about the Paris climate agreement between all the developed and the developing countries which was adopted in the year 2015 so as per this Paris climate agreement and as per the at article 4.1 and 12.1 of the Paris climate treaty each and every country or each and every participant of the Paris climate deal have the obligation 
to furnish the information regarding the implementation of the provisions which were placed or put forward in the climate treaty so what are the steps taken by those countries in order to tackle the climate change or in order to adopt or mitigate the greenhouse gas emissions everything should be put forward by each and every country so in those biennial update report which is submitted by every country it should have five salient features one is the national circumstances which means what is the present economical situation of the country whether it is developed or developing industrialized or industrializing so depend on that only its climate change contribution can be made right so what is the national circumstances of that particular country so the second one is national greenhouse gas inventory which indicates the amount of carbon dioxide or the greenhouse gases emitted by each and every country because of its industrialization and the third one is the mitigation action which indicates the steps taken by each and every country in order to mitigate the greenhouse gases and the fourth one is finance technology and the capacity building needs and the support received by those countries and the domestic monitoring so these all things indicate the support needed by the country in order to meet the climate changes so in order to track the progress of the each and every country about this climate change treaty data is very very important so in order to track all those things the reporting and the verification of those data should also be done by the country so these are the salient features which is put forward by each and every country in its own biennial update report okay so india has submitted such a report to the unfccc recently so the next article is sexual assault on boys is also punishable by death so what is the news here is the government on friday approved certain amendments to the pocso act 2012 so what is that amendment means to bring the punishment for these kind of sexual assaults on the boys on par or on equal with those against girls so if any kind of assaults is being done over the boys then it is also punishable okay so why they are doing this means it is very necessary for any country to have these kind of gender neutral laws so any law should be gender neutral in order to that means gender neutral in the sense it has to protect both boys as well as the girls so in this law they try to prevent or protect the boys and girls who are under 18 so if you see what is the background which is following the outrage over the gang rape of a minor girl in jammu and kashmir government had brought an ordinance in april so followed by it they actually passed a bill in parliament during the monsoon session to amend the ipc okay so if you see what are those amendments in the indian penal code then these are those provisions so they actually try to bring more stringent punishments for the sexual assaults so what is majorly missing here is the absence of these changes of pocso act to the crimes which was done or which is done against the boys so it is only women oriented it is not gender neutral so in order to fill that gap only now government is extending the same provision to the boys also so same offenses committed against boys is also now coming under the stringent punishment which was earlier very lighter punishment so if you see the section 6 of pocso act they now changed to include the death penalty in all the cases of aggravated penetrative assaults against the children which include both the boys and girls below the age of 18 so before it was like covering 20 categories of crimes so now government has included one more thing so which is this adding the uh, sexual assault of children who are the victims of calamities or natural disasters so taking it up to 21 category okay so 21 categories are there which is coming under the ambit of the crimes under this pocso act okay so the government also amended the definition of aggravated penetrative sexual assault to include an offence that causes the death of a child so aggravated deals with this and the minimum punishment for these kind of penetrative assaults have been increased from 7 years to 10 years okay so these are the changes which is brought by the government under the pocso act so what is the status of this amendment in pocso act means this amendment is now approved by the union cabinet and it will now have to be passed by the parliament so once it is passed why they just plan to introduce first in the rajya sabha so why they are doing this means in order to ensure that this bill once introduced even if it is not passed it will not lapse when the term of the present government come to an end or the lok sabha gets dissolved so if you try to understand this then when a bill gets introduced in lok sabha then passed by rajya sabha if in case lok sabha gets dissolved then the bill gets lapsed 
but in this situation they now try to first originate the bill in Rajya Sabha then only they are trying to pass it in Lok Sabha so even if the Lok Sabha get dissolved it will pass to the new Lok Sabha so thereby the bill will never get lapsed okay so what is the way ahead means the growing demand for the society to arrest these kind of disturbing trends by means of introducing the stringent punishments including the death penalty for these kind of cases so this stringent poxo act will act as a deterrent for all the violators but if you see in reality the data shows like less than 3% of all the poxo cases end in conviction only 3% of the cases end in conviction so what we actually need is there is there should be systematic changes in law enforcement and the prosecution which is holding the key to tackle the child abuse so the next article is india to go ahead with manned space mission by 2022 so what the news here is the gaganyaan program which was approved by the cabinet for low earth orbit mission for 7 days so if you see about this gaganyaan project it is india's first manned flight to space which is aimed to take off by 2022 so one more important thing is it is one of the cheapest space flight in the world with the entire mission including the technology development hardware usage and the infrastructure which is estimated to cost around 10000 crores so if you see it would be like a great program in pursuit of india's space autonomy so it is designed to carry about 3 human beings for a maximum period of 7 days in space with the support of academia science scientific community industry as well as with the help of or collaboration with isro so it will be launched within 40 months after the cabinet approval so one more important thing you have to note here is this gaganyaan mission would make india the fourth country to launch these kind of manned space flight after russia us and china so if you see the spacecraft will placed in low earth orbit around the earth which is in the range of uh, 300 to 400 kilometers and that means this capsule is going to get launched by the help of the launch vehicle gslv mac 3 so after the launch of this gaganyaan from the sriharikota by means of this gslv mac 3 it is going to reach this lower earth orbit within 16 minutes and it is going to circle around the lower earth orbit around the earth for 5 to 7 days and after that it is going to get decoupled that there are two modules one is the service module another one is a crew module the crew module is going to return back to the earth and the service module is going back into the space so the next article is center gives nod to draft bill on indian medicine so what the news here is the union cabinet has approved the draft national commission for indian system of medicine bill 2018 so it aims to replace the existing central council for indian medicine so now this central council is getting replaced with this national commission of indian system okay so why they are doing this means in order to promote the availability of affordable healthcare services to all the people in all parts of the country so how they are going to do or achieve this means by means of the constitution of this national commission with four autonomous boards for the purpose of conducting overall education in four major categories one is the ayurveda yunani siddha and sova rigpa so under this national commission it is having two common boards one is the board of assessment and rating second one is board of ethics and registration so it is to assess and grant the permission to educational institutions and the second one is to maintain the national register and ethical issues related to the practitioners and also to assess the standard of the teachers who are practicing all these ayurveda yunani everything before appointment and during the promotion the bill proposes a common entrance exam and an exit exam for the teachers in order to calibrate their standards so the next article is cabinet approves the easing of norms for the development in crz so what is this crz it means coastal regulation zone so if you see what is the definition of this coastal regulation zone then this is the definition that is the coastal land up to 500 meter from the high tide line and the area of 100 meter along the banks of estuaries back backwater creeks and rivers which are subject to tidal fluctuations so these all areas are generally referred to as the coastal regulation zone so in that particular areas the activities which is carried out by both the central government state government as well as the private and the public players 
it should be under the regulation right so in order to regulate the activities and in order to promote the economical activities but with conservation in mind the government has recently issued a notification which is this crz notification 2018 so as per this crz notification there are four major classification one is one which is very sensitive zone another one is four which is towards the sea that means from the low tide zone to 12 nautical miles okay so in order to carry out any kind of projects the clearance from the central government is needed for crz 1 and 4 but if you see for crz 2 and 3 the clearance from the state government is needed to carry out any kind of projects so now we are going to see each and every crz zones which means they are very sensitive you shouldn't carry out any kind of activities if you want to do so then you have to go to the central government similarly if you see two it is already developed area which is along the shoreline, line but it is under the control of municipal or corporation limit so if it is municipal or corporation you obviously go to the central state government right so state government it is and third one is the areas with a population of 2100 per square kilometer so in this area also you have to go for the state government but here you have to note one thing the 50 meter from the high tide that particular area will be no development zone which means you shouldn't carry out any kind of development activities in that particular 50 meter high tide zone okay so the last one is CR is at 3b so this is area with lesser population and it is an area up to 200 meter from the high tide line on the landward side of the year marked NDZ. So the next article is India to contribute 4,500 crore for Bhutan's five-year plan. So already in 2013 to 15, India had actually contributed the same similar amount of 4,500 crore for the Bhutan's 11th five-year plan. But for now, for the 12th five-year plan also, we are giving this same amount, 4,500 crore. So for what is the purpose means in order to carry out the Bhutan's developmental activities, thereby India can continue to be a reliable friend and a partner of Bhutan's developmental needs. So if you see from the background, the first diplomatic relationship between India and Bhutan was started from the year 1968 with the establishment of a special office of India in Timpu region of Bhutan. So this is the first major step of our relationship. The second one is the basic framework of India-Bhutan bilateral relations was the Treaty of Friendship and Cooperation between India and Bhutan, which was signed in the year 1949 between the two countries and it is recently revised in the year 2007. So as we saw before, the 1968 is the first diplomatic relation between India and Bhutan. So this 2018 is the year which is celebrated as the golden jubilee of the India-Bhutan relation. So how India and Bhutan is going to maintain this kind of relationship in a sustainable way means by means of tradition of regular visits and high level dialogues between the two countries and the number of institutional mechanisms in areas such as security between the two countries, border management and trade especially and economic and hydropower development cooperation and water resources. So the better relationship between these two countries in these all areas is provided by means of proper institutional mechanisms. And the trade between the two countries is also governed by India Bhutan Trade and Transit Agreement of 1972 which is also renewed recently in the year 2016. So as per this trade and transit agreement, it actually aims to provide duty-free transit of Bhutanese exports to the third country via India. And the last major point you have to note about the sustained relationship between India and Bhutan is, there are about nearly 60,000 Indian nationals who are living in Bhutan, who are employed mostly in projects like hydroelectric power projects and construction industries. So in order to satisfy the needs of all those people who are living in both the borders across, the, both the governments is trying to maintain these kind of sustained relationship by institutional mechanisms. So the last article is health of banks set to improve, RBI. So RBI has recently released a report in that they mentioned certain steps which should be taken by each and every banking sector, thereby the health of the banks could be recovered. So if you see the report of RBI then, the first major concern expressed by the RBI is the stressed research of Indian banking system now have begun to stabilize but at elevated levels. So this is a major thing which is put forward by the RBI and also the current level of the provisions by the banks may not be enough to cover the expected losses. So the provisions of bank should also be changed thereby we can make it up to match the expected losses. 
but in the same report they actually stated certain positive signs of our economy one is the ibc steps are encouraging that is the indian bankruptcy code has actually resulted in better recovery of the npas and the second major thing is the assert liability mismatch of nbfcs are now being proactively addressed so it is also a positive thing right but they stated like the pj nayak committee's recommendation should be implemented thereby we can strengthen the corporate governance system which is suffering because of the growing size and the complexity of the banks in the recent years so the last major thing by the rbi report is the rbi nominees to the public sector bank boards it is also now under severe conflict of interest so certain kind of legislative changes had to be done to do away with such requirement thereby we can prevent this kind of conflict of interest and the last one is the policy on wholly owned subsidiaries of the foreign banks it is should also be reviewed to help to foster the competition between the foreign banks as well as the domestic banks